sorry everyone, I was just trying to make sure all my various bits were still attached. See, last time I tried to use the transporters here, my underwear materialized backwards. You see, here at that guy with the glasses, we're still using the old Mark I transporters without the multiplex pattern buffers, so it's only a matter of time before one of us gets transporter psychosis or something. Yeah, I mean, if you're not careful, you can come down with various symptoms like uh, insomnia, acute myopia, painful spasms in the extremities, dehydration, and, um, uh, that's not even getting into the, ah, damn it, that's not even getting into the various psychological issues like, uh, hallucinations, paranoid delusions, dementia, and then, of course, there's the irrational fits of rage. Mm. God damn it, son of a bitch! Ah. And who the hell are you? Seriously, what are you doing here? This guy is trashing my scene, man! I mean, here I am trying to do a review, and all of a sudden this, this fuzzy, weird, blue alien thing comes wandering onto the set all la di da di da di da and I'm trying to focus here, and hang on, my coke's ringing. Hello? <laughs> Beam me up, Mr. Scott. Sulu, go to warp. Warp 3, sir. No, that will be way too slow. Today I'm reviewing Star Trek Borg, a game released in 1996, a time when most people had already given up on interactive movies as a pretty lame idea. In fact, by this point, most people had already given up on Star Trek as a pretty lame idea, too. What, you liked Star Trek Generations? Eat my balls! In this game, you play as Cadet Kalen Furlong, a trainee who joined Starfleet to one day avenge the death of his father at the hands of the Borg ten years ago. And luckily, you happen to be on the Enterprise on the very day the Borg re-emerged from the Delta Quadrant to attack. Unluckily, as a cadet, you're not qualified to squeegee the main view screen, so you're sent packing on a shuttlecraft to the nearest starbase. But that's when everyone's favorite omnipotent being Q appears, to give Kalen a shot at revenge. Perhaps I should introduce myself. I imagine you've heard of me, though, Q. It's short for Q. It was I, you know, who introduced Picard to the Borg, and it's because of me that ten years ago the Borg came to Wolf 359 and found that fleet of ships and found your father and killed them all. You want action? You want to avenge your father's death? You want to kill Borg? What I don't get is why Q offers you the chance at revenge seconds after he basically admits the entire Borg invasion is his fault. And it is. I mean, seriously, when you think about it, there's almost no point in being mad at the Borg. They're basically mindless automata. They'll assimilate anything. It's like trying to get revenge against bees because ten years ago a bee stung your father. It's what they do. They're bees. And you can't get revenge against Q because he's basically God. Maybe you didn't hear me. I'm offering you a chance to go and kill some Borg. Do you want to or not? Actually, you can by choosing to go home and not play a stupid game, but then it's game over. And to think I went to so much trouble to arrange it all. I like that they even give you a choice. You know, like, why do you even bother buying this game if you were just going to refuse to play it? But actually, it is a legitimate choice, because if you load the game up again, you're going to learn its first true hard lesson. You can't skip the movies. Ever. And the opening cinematic is like four minutes long. After seeing all this crap twice, you might just choose to exit the game all over again. Don't even bother. But for now, let's just assume that you play along. Q takes you into the past aboard the USS Righteous, a ship that was destroyed when the Borg originally attacked Wolf 359. He then proceeds to alter the past so that you take the place of Lieutenant Sprint, a redshirt who originally got killed by a boarding party. He then leaves it up to you to stop the Borg and save your dad. You're not afraid of a little space-time continuum meddling, are you, cadet? No, I thought not. Oh man, we are so gonna bend over the space-time continuum tonight. Q himself assumes the body of the ship's resident dickhead, Dr. Quint. He actually tried to save Sprint's life, but as you can see, he failed the old goat. Well, what'd you expect? He's a doctor, not a security officer. But he never really gets into the spirit of role-playing his part. I'm an omnipotent being masquerading as Dr. Quint. Whatever I want to happen, happens. Interesting fantasy. The game plays out like one of those super lethal choose-your-own-adventure novels, only like a movie. Every now and then the game halts and gives you some time to make a choice, and there's only one right thing to choose. Every other choice, well... The Borg are firing! We're gonna die! And it's your fault. Well, I hope we're learning something from our little mistakes. Don't worry, we don't have to start completely over. This is Q we're talking about, remember? With a snap of his fingers, he can just bring it back to life whenever he wants. And he does. A lot. You're dead. 
Half a billion gigawatts will do that to you. The gimmick to this game is that whenever you die, Q just brings you back to life to the same decision point you died at so you can try again. Although I honestly think Q just orchestrated this entire thing to watch you, an entirely unqualified, untrained cadet play with highly hazardous equipment, and basically get shot, stabbed, blown up, electrocuted, and assimilated in increasingly comedic ways. And then, being God, he has the unique pleasure of resurrecting you and then rubbing your nose in your own festering pile of ashes. Weird. I know I'm going to hate myself in the morning, but I'm going to give you another chance. It's not that I care. I just want to see how it turns out. You'll learn rather quickly that this game keeps playing the same trick on you by offering you two obvious choices, both of which are going to get you killed. There's almost always a third option hidden somewhere on the screen, so my best advice to beating the game is to never click on the obvious choices. Click on anything else, and the less sense it makes, the better. What's annoying, though, is that the game is structured in such a way that the puzzles are basically unsolvable unless you force yourself to seek out every possible way to die. It's kind of clever, actually, and yet simultaneously very, very irritating. For instance, when you beam aboard the Borg Cube, you're given the option of shooting a couple of wandering drones. Now, fans of the show would realize that shooting drones is kind of a dumb move, since they'll just ignore you unless you pose an obvious threat, like shooting them. What are you looking at, cadet? But no matter what you do, when you try to access their computer, you get attacked and die. Instead, you're actually expected to go in phasers blazing just to get everyone killed and assimilated by the Borg. When you're part of the Collective, you're given all of their access codes. And then you die, and Q takes you back in time to a previous decision point where you can use the codes on the computer. And I'll admit, that kind of thinking is surprisingly innovative with the whole time travel concept, but instead of encouraging smart gameplay, it just sort of leads you to doing monumentally stupid things in the hope it'll provide you with future clues. It's a sort of an everything including the kitchen sink approach to gaming, and it also means you're going to be stuck watching the same unskippable movie scenes dozens and dozens of times! As for the acting, it's... well, it's Star Trek. Technology! Channels! Subspace channels! The Borg implant taking over systems! Sentence fragments can finish complete thought! Resistances! You will be assimilated! His mind full of dust bunnies and pain! Pain! The only thing that makes all this bearable is that John Delancey is always awesome as Q, and it's hard not to have fun when he's around being an insufferable prick. Ooh, I like this guy! Even so, you'll start to overdose on the Q after a while because he's everywhere, and he's always talking, talking, talking. He's always shoving shit in your face and saying neener, neener when you get killed. He's just too stupid to live. After a while, you just want to kick him in the nuts and go, SHUT UP! Oh! Oh! I just kicked Q in the joy department. That can't be smart. But let's do it again. Oh! Uppercut! Uppercut! Oh! Oh! Seriously, the guy mugs and chews his way through entire decks of starship scenery. And luckily, all the scenery belongs to Star Trek Voyager, so who cares? I still like you. <laughs> he kissed me. Yeah, I may be omnipotent, but I'm not omnisexual. I'm not gay or anything. I love the pussy. All right, now that's what I'm talking about. Hey, forget the Borg, man. Let's party. Hey, let's all have pizza and margarita. Shoot her. Hey, why do you get to keep all the foxy chicks for yourself? Why? Because I can. <laughs> ah, well, that's Q for you. Hey, that brings us to the end of this review, but there's a lot more games out there, and I'd love to review them, but the only way you can see them is if everyone pitches in, because, after all, those Klingon language camp lessons are expensive. So, until next time, I'll see you out there. Live long and prosper.
is that for? 